Hello everyone, Ben here and welcome back to iRacing. This is our second new series for Season 4 and it's the Ferrari GT3 Evo Fixed. We're at uh, Summit Point for the first race of the season and I have struggled in qualifying. So I did just hop in, in fairness, I haven't done any practice at all. Uh, but I am quite a way off the pace, uh, 1.6 seconds to be precise and down in 16th and last of anybody who set a time. It's a stacked grid. I'm really enjoying the feel of the car, so I'm hoping that as we get going in this race, which is a 15 minute sprint race, uh, that we will pick up speed as we go. Uh, but it is a very challenging circuit, Summit Point, uh, particularly in these cars and, you know, overtaking is going to be really, really difficult. I think it's going to be more about can we avoid making mistakes and potentially pick up on the errors of others uh, as we go. You can see here from the formation lap just how crowded the track looks. It's a really narrow snaking track. If there's an overtaking opportunity, it's probably down into T1. If you like the video, please do hit the like button uh, and get subscribed to the channel. But for now, we are underway and we're just about green now. So we're gonna get on the gas, down the uh, start finish straight for the first time. We've deliberately left a little bit of a gap to the cars ahead to just give ourselves some breathing space into T1. But we might pay the price of that as I think Linton is coming down our inside. We're not gonna fight him too much into T1. 15 minutes left of this race. I don't want an accident on lap one. That is my priority. Coming round then to the trickiest corner on the lap for me, uh, this left-hander here, you want to get it down into third gear and then just funnel the car through. Very easy for the back end to step out there or to run wide. And if you do either, then it's certainly going to be a crash for you. It may be a crash for the cars around you as well. Hard on the brakes here, through into the left-hander and then this uh, loop section, really got to just try and feather the car through first gear then into second and then just try and sort of almost slide the car through this set of corners sticking to the racing line don't get greedy on the gas here and we were a little greedy to be fair on cold tires which meant we didn't really hit the apex so it looks like we've lost the position then on this opening lap we're down into 17 through into the final corner here then onto the start finish straight but up ahead one car has gone off to the right hand side he must have got it wrong into the final corner so we'll take that position back and actually it looks as if on the timing screen we're showing us in 12th so there must have been some other cars who either started from the pit lane or had trouble but in the meantime we've ran wide into t1 we were coming under a bit of pressure from behind and unfortunately we just took our eye off our breaking point we're going to lose another position here so even though we were up to 12th unfortunately we've lost all of that ground at least but there's another accident up ahead so it's all go here in the opening laps i kind of knew it was going to be my plan was just to try and keep our nose clean we just about managed to do it on the opening lap but then we ran wide thankfully no contact no damage so we can just keep going and hope uh, that we can make some of these places back in the race i am kind of targeting a top 10 here that's what i'd like to achieve out of this opening race uh, in the ferrari through the snaking section once again then trying to keep close behind Scrob who's just up ahead. Uh, he is uh, the next car on track but let's take a look back then at the start. This is the very um, first time through the opening corner. You can see then we just give the place to Linton down our inside. Not going to fight that uh, on the opening lap. I don't want any contact that could ruin our race for the remainder but then if we just um, follow the cars through this left hander here you'll see um, everybody gets through just about okay on to the next lap and we've got another car down our inside and that just puts us off and it runs us wide i've got to be really careful here not to spin the car but i want to keep some forward momentum we rejoin another car then uh, just slips past us on the inside and that is a real shame we're going to see an accident though just up ahead of us and then just behind us so one car's already beached it in the gravel and then the alpha tower delivery ferrari behind us gets it wrong let's go on board with the car up ahead who just loses the back end slides it around and then 
unfortunately has to wait in order to rejoin all the way to the back of the pack otherwise he would definitely have collected more cars here's the Alpha Tauri Ferrari behind us just sliding off and he's in the middle of the track unfortunately and bang that is a huge shunt uh, with a yellow Ferrari then coming through and keeping his foot planted uh, that was either brave or crazy or maybe a little bit of both we're coming up onto the back then of Scrob and really curiously he lets us by so I don't know whether he had a slowdown penalty whether he was carrying damage but that was a bit of an easy pass for us there so pretty pleased to get back up then into 14th position after that about three minutes into this race and we've got a bit of clear track up ahead of us now so hopefully we can just settle down and try and start setting some quicker lap times than we were able to in qualifying in order to be competitive i think i need to be in the one minute nines and in qualifying all i could do was a low 110 so if we could get another half a second off that time in race pace then i think we'll be set relatively well to be competing at least on the fringes of the top 10. down the start finish straight then for the end of another lap we're going to come into t1 here let's just talk a little bit more about the car then and what it's like to drive a gt3 in iRacing this is my first time driving a gt3 in iRacing and I suppose like all cars I suppose in the sim compared to say race room or a set of Corsa it feels a bit more alive and, and you know you're either going to like that or not and I think it's to do with the tyre model as much as anything else um, there is a weight to these cars for sure uh, and the force feedback's very nice it feels on default which is all I'm running at the moment um, like there's a good amount of feedback uh, of, of, sort of responsiveness oh but just as I say that having to respond to something on track as a car had span it at the loop thankfully off the racing line so that's another position gained uh, as I was just talking you through there the feel of the car thankfully I was able to miss on what was potentially a very serious accident if I had ran into this stricken car you could see there he just got a bit of a tank slapper coming out thankfully although he starts to rejoin he thinks better of it as there's two cars coming for him to uh, avoid running into so we're up into 12th position then just to finish off then on what the Ferrari feels like it feels like it's got a lot of power which is great it feels quite aggressive really enjoy that and in many respects you know it's probably the most engaging GT3 I've had to drive just out of the box stock set up gonna finish there though because up ahead you can see some more action on track as the two cars up ahead Elefteru and Neves have come together we're gonna get past Neves immediately we're gonna try and get the other car as well but we're side by side here about to go into the swooping left hander there's a yellow flag out as well so I'm not sure what's waiting us around the corner thankfully it looks as if the car ahead has rejoined uh, and we managed to get through both cars who had that incident together in T1 we'll take a look at that in a second but we've just maybe got a chance uh, of closing in on the car ahead as well which I think is um, Skinkovic uh, just up ahead of us here in the green Lavrud Ferrari perhaps he's going to get away from us and it doesn't look as if he's got damage so we might have to settle uh, for I think we're in 10th place now for 10th place at the moment so even though we had a pretty steady opening couple of laps you can see from mistakes like this as look at that oh the car just steers into Neves he basically was trying to get down his inside there but just got a bit out of shape on the brakes and unfortunately that was contact we come swooping past here's another view uh, from the onboard of the attacking car and you can see oh it just gets away from him there's contact and unfortunately that is going to cost both of them and you've got to imagine both will be running damage we didn't have too much time to worry about though because you're about to see us appear on the outside of the yellow Ferrari I was really nervous he was going to fight me for this position here's another view of it you can see he actually thinks about fighting us for it but then mercifully gets out just in time for us to get round the corner we would have had more speed because I am absolutely sure he's got damage and in fact he's going to have to concede another position there um, to Nevers who's now running behind us we rejoin then just over half race distance sitting in 10th place lapping consistently in the mid 109s which is what after all we wanted to achieve so that is brilliant i've been able to increase my pace as this race has gone on we've also kept ourselves down to just a 1x for that early race um, excursion at t1 um, so we're doing well on incident points uh, as well which is brilliant down into t1 again then hard on the brakes here get the car turned in you want to get all the way down into first gear i found just to get the car rotated nicely and then you can power out 
on the exit. The gap to Aaron up ahead is around two and a half seconds. That's largely where it's been at. I'm not sure I'm going to have the pace to catch him. A little bit hesitant there on the turn in, as you could see. So this might be as good as it gets for us as we come round into uh, the loop complex here. On the brakes, another yellow flag out though. So what are we going to find as we come round the corner here? One car off to the right, another off to the left. I have to get out of our line to then just sneak down the right-hand side. And I think that was Simon Brewster, uh, who is one of the quicker drivers in this field. I think he was number six uh, coming into uh, the session in terms of eye rating. So he's now dropped behind us. Uh, and I think the other car was Linton who passed us on the opening lap. Let's take a look back then at how this played out. This is Linton we're following here and he just tags Brewster round. Really unfortunate there, a small amount of contact but really damaging for both drivers. You can see then Brewster rejoining, we come into shot here and we're just able to avoid his car and swoop past but Neves couldn't get past him. Uh, so he is now sitting behind uh, in 11th place still but we are up into 8th with just 5 minutes left of this race then as we rejoin. Brewster shouldn't have too much damage from that incident, so I'm expecting quite a big challenge from him, but this is a very challenging circuit to overtake. We run in a little bit deep to the right hander there, that's going to give him a little bit of impetus potentially through this part of the circuit. We're still setting fastest lap times for us though, personal best lap times. We're a tenth and a half up on this lap, so we have got the back cap back to just half a second at the moment. I still haven't corrected the field of view in my rear view mirror, so it looks like he's further back than he is. He is only half a second behind us, Brewster. So we can't make a single mistake here, otherwise we will lose uh, at least one of the positions uh, that we've worked so hard to get uh, in this race. So far we've gained eight spots off the start. Get the car slowed down around and into T1 once again, and this is gonna be the crucial moment here. Can we keep the car through into um, the left-hand kink and then down into the heavy braking zone of the loop? Because I think T1 is one overtaking opportunity. Potentially down into the loop is another, um, but you just have to be very, very careful making this move as we've just seen from Linton. Thankfully, it looks as if from this evidence, Brewster is a pretty sensible driver. I was half expecting a bit of a lunge there. He was only two tenths behind us. I mean, that is nothing. And if he'd wanted to stick one down the inside, then we could have both been in quite a bit of trouble. So I'm grateful to him that he didn't try anything rash there as we're coming into the final third of this race. Uh, so it's an interesting combination to pick for the first race of the D-Class Ferrari GT3 fixed series this. I mean, it is in many respects quite helpful because it teaches you good racecraft, or it should. Uh, but at the same time, uh, very little margin for error and look at how close he got to us here coming down into the braking zone I mean he really is nudging us through the corner he'll be frustrated Brewster I'm sure because he lost his position uh, through no fault of his own really he was running in traffic and then got tagged from behind so I'm very grateful that he hasn't then overreacted uh, on track here's a little bit more footage from his on board over the coming laps because this is how close we were running essentially for the remainder of this race you can see from his on board just how close he gets to us in the braking zones uh, here of this track he's following no more than a few tenths of a second behind us uh, pretty much uh, for the remaining uh, for the remainder of this race but he's very very patient doesn't get too aggressive doesn't do anything rash or daft which could potentially put us both out of the race but he's just trying to put some pressure on us I think he's hoping that I make a mistake take uh, uh, to the grass verge uh, and then that would allow him pass so he's doing everything he reasonably can um, given how big these GT3 cars look on this narrow tight and twisty summit point circuit but there just isn't a way past in the cockpit I was feeling the pressure as we came on to our final lap then and this is it white flag has been waved so one more lap to home um, I come then to the inside, just covering off this first corner apex, really just sending Brewster a signal. It wasn't as if I ever thought he was going to dive bomb us, but I just wanted him to know that I was alive to his presence and there was going to be no way down the inside for him. Threw into the left-hand kink for a final time. Again, just a little bit hesitant. That's going to put him on our rear wing again. Look at this, he's right closed up. It's now less than two tenths of a second behind us. There's really, though, nowhere for him to go down into this uh, heavy braking zone because, again, we cover off the inside. I'm just being almost overly exaggerated in that movement to make sure that Brewster knows I'm not really in the mood to let him pass, even though I guess we both know he's the quicker driver on the day. 
um, but being quicker is one thing, getting past is another. But I am really grateful to him for being respectful in that regard and being sensible in how we race. And that's really the biggest surprise for me in running um, this Ferrari um, GT3 fix for the first time. Yes, there's been plenty of incidents in the race, but I haven't really seen anything which um, has been too outrageous. And this series has got a bit of a bad reputation for driving standards as we come home in eighth place in this race. And I haven't seen those poor standards this time out. Here's the final classifications then. We started in P16 running very, very slowly. We were able to get our lap times down into the mid 109s and we come home in eighth place largely just by running a tidy race and taking advantage of others' mistakes. So really pleased with that. Very enjoyable car to run. I'm looking forward to racing more of these races uh, as season four progresses here on iRacing. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like, get subscribed to the channel and I will see you on the next one.